everybody, welcome back to another very exciting Adobe Live. I am Jesus Ramirez and with me is the talented Anna McNaught. Hey Anna, how's it going? Hi everyone, it's going well. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, it's super awesome to be back here on Adobe Live and I'm looking at the chat and I already see a lot of familiar faces. Ferry Otuomo, always in the chat. Thank you for the support. Sean, haven't seen you in a while. How's it going, man? The uh, uh, Photoshop Banana Crew is, is here again. So Sean uh, was the person that gave the um, Photoshop Banana Crew name to the uh, streams I used to do because I always had a banana on the toolbar, which I don't have one at the moment. So I'm going to have to add it in there for Sean. Yes, and, <laughs> I have and, mine on, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> fantastic. You know, you have to be one of the cool kids. Otherwise, you know, it's not going to work. So you, you need to make sure you add that banana in the toolbar and we'll show you how to do that a little later on. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I see Steve, Carol, thank you so much. It's, they're always supporting us here at Adobe Live. I'm streaming from the beautiful Bay Area in California. Where are you streaming from, Anna? I am in New Jersey in our new house, which you can Yay. see behind me. And anyone who has seen me stream before or host, I've been on the road. I've been in random people's houses and we finally have our own house. So it's really exciting. And I can tell it's a beautiful home because what was the first thing I said to you when I saw you today? I was like, oh, is that a, <laughs> that's a beautiful green screen behind this gorgeous yeah. office. <laughs> I thought it was He's sweet, like, is but... that real? <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's beautiful. So congratulations on the new home. Um, let us know where you're watching from. I always like to see where people are tuning in from. So let us know in the chat. Today, we're going to discuss Photoshop compositing. We're going to teach you guys about sky replacement and different techniques that you can use to improve your photos, a little bit of retouching, removing distractions and things like that with your photos. We're going to get started with Anna and about halfway through, we're going to move on to me where I'm going to show you uh, more of, of similar techniques on how to improve your images and skies. So Anna, when you're ready, um, I, I, we can get started. All right, let's see here. <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen. And by the way, I noticed that um, Sean called me Freddie in the chat. <laughs> so um, I said before that my family calls me Freddie. Like I have, I have family members that don't know my name is Jesus. So um, I mentioned that once in the in one of the Adobe lives and it always comes up now. <laughs> that is really funny. I'm going to have to start calling you that. Yeah. And actually, um, Paul Tranny, his family calls him Ryan. So I call oh, yeah. Paul Ryan and he calls me Freddie. Yeah. Oh, man, I love you guys. <laughs> so funny. So good. Um, all right, so we can dive right into everything and I'll just give you all a little uh, overview of what we're gonna be doing, even though Jesus kind of told you a bit about the sky replacement. I just wanna show you some of the photos that we're gonna be working on today. And then I will do a quick scroll through the folder as well. And then mm -hmm. you all can pick out anything that calls to you. And maybe we can play around with it a little bit at the end, depending on how much time we have. Um, so this is just one of me and Glacier. As some of you may know, uh, my husband and I have been traveling for the past two years and we've seen lots of beautiful places around the US from our camper van. And so I love to play with these photos that we take and I like to put them into Photoshop and uh, either just change the skies in a realistic way for clients or um, mm -hmm. change them in a very surreal and fun way, which we're gonna be doing tomorrow. So here's just a few of the images that I want to be playing with today to kind of show you all how you can quickly change skies in Photoshop. Cool. It, there's a lot of love for you in the chat, Anna. And um, Cody Burr actually had a good idea. Some people may not be familiar with your work. So at some point, why don't we bring up your uh, whatever you want to show, either Behance or your Instagram. I know you're pretty big on Instagram and you have a lot of awesome photos there. So be awesome for you to share some of your work so that people that don't know you could follow you and, and sure. see more of your work. Yes, let me bring that up. So let us know in the chat who doesn't know Anna and let us know when you start following her on Instagram. I follow her on Instagram and I highly recommend that you do. And actually, I also um, follow you on TikTok, Anna. You have some really <laughs> um, um, awesome videos about you know your, your van life. Um, yes, let's take a look at that too. Um, let me bring that up. TikTok. Oh, cool. Uh, Foster uh, 
Brereton, and I'm sorry if I pronounce or mispronounce your name, Foster. He says, I wrote the banana Easter egg in Photoshop. So cool to see it in the wild. Awesome. Oh well, thank you so much for writing that, Foster. I really appreciate it because I show it everywhere. Everywhere I go, I'm always putting that, uh, showing people how to add that banana onto the toolbar. So thank you so much for adding it in there. I think it's awesome. That's really cool. Thank you. Oh my Mar gosh. I have no Marcia, idea. Marcia said, Foster, you're the banana man. <laughs> <laughs> So here's my Instagram and here's um, some of the stuff that I do. And I just actually launched um, a moon series as uh, an NFT, which we could get into a whole side tangent about NFTs, but um, that's what you see here as these recent pieces. And you may be seeing a lot of different um, moon surrealism pieces coming up for me over the next few weeks. Um, but I kind of do like a surrealism, dreamy, uh, I love like dark tones with bright pops of color and a lot of glow. And lately I've been trying to just kind of experiment with different things. Like this is not something I would normally do or really my style, but I've just been really trying to not worry about what kind of likes and follows I'm getting on Instagram and start to pay attention to art that makes me feel good and art that pushes my boundaries a little. And I think that's really tough as a creative because we can get stuck in this rat race of trying to appeal to Instagram and our audience and forgetting about what makes us happy. So I've been really trying to embrace that lately. It's an ongoing struggle, but um, hopefully you'll continue to see my work grow and expand. Awesome. And your Instagram account is, where can we find you? It is Anna McNaughty. So just exactly. my name, but add a Y at the end. It was <laughs> my high school nickname that stuck for a long time. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Awesome nickname. People always remember me by it when I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm McNaughty. They're like, oh, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> So this is actually one of my fun recent pieces that I did. I just like really like this one. And I made it while we were um, on a trip down in Georgia and South Carolina. It was something that was like different than anything else I've done and just kind of pushing myself uh, out of my comfort zone a little bit. So that felt really good. But yeah, so that's my Instagram. You can take a look at it. And then um, this is our TikTok where we have way more followers than I do on Instagram. Um, and I haven't created any TikToks for a while just because it got to be a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, but we teach all about van life and uh, living on the road. And so now we have to talk more about like house life and, and that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, I, I used to follow your, or still follow your TikTok, but I was mainly interested in the cat. Oh yeah, that's Lucy. <laughs> She's upstairs right now, absolutely loving her new house. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, she's great. So um, yeah, let's dive into some Photoshop and uh, let me know if there is anything that you all wanna see me do um, and, and play around with. But um, one of the things I wanted to kind of touch on is a lot of times when you're out shooting photos, you don't have the ideal sky. And this was an absolutely beautiful landscape in Glacier, but um, the sky was less than ideal. You can see it was totally washed out. And a lot of times, our clients will ask us for uh, sunny sky photos. And of course, Photoshop is our best friend when it comes to that. But um, Photoshop has made it extremely easy now to just go ahead and in and replace that sky. So maybe mm -hmm. some of you have seen this, but we'll uh, play around with some different photos. So Sounds I'm just good. Great. I am just going to copy this so that we're never working on our background layer. We can always go back to it. And I'm gonna come up to edit and down to sky replacement. So let's see this work its magic. Cool. Also shout outs to Andrew Kavanaugh in the chat who has a large Facebook group on Photoshop. He's a good friend and uh, yeah, check out Andrew on Facebook. Photoshop and Lightroom group, great resource for Photoshop and Lightroom users. Awesome. Okay, so um, Photoshop has put all of these skies in for us to use. Let me just see if I can shift this a little bit. Bring that over here. 
There we go. So these are already programmed in and it's great because you can already see how this is starting to give it like a really nice look. So just by adding some clouds in there, we can come in and clean up these mountains and now boom, and you instantly have this like great travel photo that a client would be happy about because your sky isn't blown out. So you have all sorts of like fun options in here. We have the blue skies and the spectacular skies. We could add a rainbow in there. That's actually kind of cool. I like that. Really cool. And then some sunsets. And then let's see, here's the sunset category. We got these kind of like more natural looking sunsets if you want kind of like this could definitely work in this situation. Mm -hmm. um, I just love like clicking through and playing around with them and seeing what comes up. Um, and then another great thing, which we'll kind of show you more of tomorrow is being able to add your own skies. And then Jesus is gonna show you the new feature in Photoshop of get more skies. Mm -hmm. But I've created my own folder here where I can add in crazy stuff and kind of add, you can start to see how we get that surrealism look. And this is all what we're going to be doing tomorrow and really having some fun with this. So make sure that you join us again tomorrow. Yes. Also, um, I just want to say uh, just a real quick shout out to Jan Martin. Uh, Jan is watching from Australia and it's 2 a.m. there. So thank you for staying up so late watching us. <laughs> yes. Wow. Oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, Steve is in New Zealand, 4.41 a.m. I don't know if you stayed up late or woke up early, but thank you, Steve. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's play around with this a little bit because I think this sky is kind of working well here. I feel like it looks most natural and we can start mm -hmm. to um, shift the edge. And this helps to kind of blend this a little bit more in here. Um, we can fade the edge. There's lots of good options. I, to be totally honest with you all, I have always been doing my skies the old school way where I will come in and I will do a channel layer mask or mm -hmm. I will um, kind of just cut it out with the pen tool or however I see fit and then drop my sky in. Mm -hmm. So I think we can even maybe just show that yeah, briefly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it'll be um, because that technique can be so much helpful for other things, not just skies. So it's a fantastic yeah. technique for people to know. Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes I feel like, you know, we're not necessarily changing out a sky, but we might be changing out another mm -hmm. area and mm -hmm. using this technique is really helpful. Definitely. So, um, and then you can change the temperature, which I think is really cool. Like just kind of starting to match that sky. We can see when it is more in the blue field, we start to get kind of this weird looking image. But then as we go a little bit into the yellow and warmer tones, we can get it to match. So then we'll just clean up the mountains here. All right, so click OK. And there's also some other um, brush tools in there you can play around with and kind of fixing the sky. But again, like I said, I always like to do things the old school way. So I'll just kind of come back into this, into these layers down here. And let me just move this up so you can see a bit more. And I'll get in and start to examine what Photoshop AI did here. So I'll just click on this. And I just clicked Alt or Option to bring up that layer mask. And then we can start to see like areas where it kind of missed with the snow on these mountains here and then go in and clean that up. So we'll just quickly, if I have the right brush, that would help. <laughs> and I'm just doing this kind of fast, but we can really work on getting that back and then even bringing these mountains down. Super cool. And I always tell people that this is what I really like about the new sky replacement feature, that it's not like a filter that just slaps the sky onto your image. It outputs actual Photoshop layers and you can actually go in there and fine tune them further to get even better results. So yeah, exactly. Super love that. I think that's really great. And the fact that you have this foreground lighting here that you can play with mm -hmm. and then foreground color, even you can see it's giving like a tint to the overall image. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you can come in too and just with a nice big soft brush. So we'll turn our flow down. I tend to use flow a lot. And if you've seen any of my other live streams, you've seen me use flow for everything. Mm -hmm. 
and just kind of like blending and brushing that out, even though Photoshop sky replacement wanted to do that automatically on its own to mm -hmm. kind of blend that edge. I always think coming in with a brush and even if you have any of your own um, preset brushes like clouds and stuff, you can really start to touch that up. Uh oh, mm -hmm. I'm getting pinwheel of death. There we go. For some reason, my computer does not like sky replacement. <laughs> <laughs> Are you um, using a tablet right now or do you work with a mouse? Um, I just actually use my laptop trackpad. Oh my is, God, you're amazing. <laughs> I know, and I've used it for years and because oh, of like wow. being in the van and everything, it's just like what I have. And and although on the, I, so I do sometimes hook up my iPad to be my tablet for mm -hmm, my computer. Mm -hmm. Um, and not actually use Photoshop on the iPad at using it on the desktop. Um, but yeah, I tried to have a tablet and I couldn't do it. Wow. You have the pulse of a surgeon. You're like, so yeah. with it. I'm going to end up having all these issues yeah. in my hand. So you're like, hi, my name is Anna and your yeah. fingers are crooked. <laughs> I know. Check in with me in a few years. If you see me in person, be like, how's your hand? Yeah. <laughs> Listen in the chat if you use a mouse, a tablet, or a trackpad. Yeah. <laughs> people are saying, Bruce is saying, whoa, respect. I know. It's like, I'm always so embarrassed when people ask me about that. And it just, you know, it's, I guess it's whatever works for you, but it's, yeah. it's very um, not correct. <laughs> yeah. So I use a mouse to teach, but I use the tablet for, you know, quote unquote, real work, you know? Yeah. I know. It's so much smarter. So I'm just going to add a curves to this a little bit and start to play with um, kind of bringing some of these shadows back into the mountain, see how that looks. Um, and I'm kind of just, I'm doing this just to kind of test things out and play around. And I find that that's what Photoshop is so much about is playing, playing around with things. And so usually in my workflow, I will add a curves layer and then I'll go command I and I'll invert it. And then mm -hmm. I'll go back in and paint in the areas mm -hmm. um, that I want to use. So we'll just kind of darken up these mountains. And again, with a nice low flow. We could even come in and like bring the contrast up on these and um, dehaze it and do a little bit more work to mm -hmm. get it to look good. Yeah. And, and again, this is what I love about uh, the sky replacement that you don't, you're not stuck with the output. You just created your own curves adjustment layer and then continued working on it. So it's super, yeah. super cool. Yeah, now I'm just playing around with the color balance that came up for the sky temperature. So I can really get in there and start to make this look like it belongs in the original photo and just kind of tweaking it to match everything. And I always tend to just like work back and forth all over the canvas and um, kind of as if, kind of like what they teach you in art school and you're drawing and they teach you to like really work through the whole piece rather mm -hmm. than just like one tiny area. Mm -hmm. So that's looking pretty good. What we could do is we could um, take this layer of uh, me in the mountains and then we could put it into camera raw filter. And so I tend to use this all the time, even more so than um, any of the adjustment layers, just because I think it gives like a really powerful, really beautiful effect to all of mm -hmm. your images. Mm -hmm. I use it in the beginning and I use it at the end. So. Yeah here i'm just going to do a little dehaze on these mountains and Ooh. see if that helps a little bit and i don't really use dehaze too often um, because it can start to give this really oversaturated look but in this case we might be able to just get some of that detail back in nice bring the shadows up a little and I'm gonna just, let's see, Zoom is blocking my view. Um, we have some comments in the chat regarding the new sky replacements. We're going to talk about those a little later on. And also there's talk about the, Rick is mentioning the Adobe stock free images where you can find a lot of nice skies. So we'll probably show those as well so that everyone has access to all these free resources. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sean just, <laughs> Sean just mentioned that he notices my hovering art director, like right here. I don't know if you guys are looking at my can see it but like over my shoulder here you can see a hovering art director from adobe stock <laughs> so oh I yeah <laughs> i can't believe you noticed it 
This over here is Lucky. That's the MSI Dragon. So I'm sponsored by MSI, and they sent me this giant chrome dragon named Lucky. So he sits behind me too. I love that. He's cool. I want one of those. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have him send you one. Good. <laughs> Okay, so you can see that just by doing a little bit of camera raw adjustment with that dehaze, um, it kind of like gave a much more contrasty look, which is a little bit cool for this and kind of pops all the colors and the mountains. And then maybe you can start to decide, do you need that curves in there still? Maybe not. Um, and then maybe we need to just like brighten that sky back up. So um, I think there's a couple different ways you could do this. I'm not sure if you could do it directly in sky replacement, but um, in, so for me, I would just clip this and then uh, give it a little boost in curves. Nice. And even though it does kind of give that blown out look, it starts to kind of match everything a little bit better. So just in doing that in our little sky replacement that we did here, we can just group these. And then you can see we went from this to this in a matter of a couple of minutes. So that's like a really, really easy way to kind of either enhance your basic landscape photos or travel photos or kind of give your clients whatever kind of look that they're looking for. Super cool. All right, so do you, before I show another image, do you wanna show the um, the new features for sky replacement? Um, why don't we just finish on your computer and then we can bounce back to mine or is it easy to do like a swap? I believe it'd be easy to do a swap, right? Yeah, I think it should be easy. Okay, and cool. Then... Cool, so yeah, I can show the new, the new features. Um, so if we switch over to my screen, we can definitely do that, so. Just let me know when my screen is visible. Okay, it looks like my screen is ready to roll. Cool. So this is one of the photos that I'm not sure if you or your husband took it, uh, but either <laughs> this photo, <laughs> this lovely photo is by Anna and or James. So thank you so much for uh, allowing me to use this photo for the stream. It's, it's quite beautiful. Um, but yeah, as you saw earlier with Anna, you can do a sky replacement by going into edit and sky replacement. And there's all these awesome skies that come with Photoshop. But as some of you may know, Photoshop recently had an update, the Photoshop August update. And there are new packs that you can download. So this is one of the ones that I just downloaded called Storms Pack 1. And as you can see, it's got these amazing storm images that you can add to your photos. And the way to get to those is by going into the gear icon and selecting Get More Skies. Now this window will pop up. Let me drag it over onto the screen. And as you can see, this page has different packs that you can download to install into Photoshop. Uh, one thing is you do need to be a Creative Cloud subscriber and you do need to be logged in with your Adobe ID. And I guess if you don't have the Creative Cloud then you don't have access to the Sky feature, so. Um, but anyway, you can see the different packs here. Sunsets, Spectacular, night skies, blue skies, storms. So I would recommend that you download all these into your computer and install them into Photoshop so that you can have access to them and work with them on your images. So for example, let's try night skies. All you need to do is click on the download button. I'll save it on the desktop for me. It's going to download, there it is. It's gonna take a few seconds. Once it's downloaded, all you need to do is come into the sky replacement tool from this dropdown uh, click on the gear icon and select import skies and select sky presets. The downloadables is a file type called .sky um, and, and that's the file type that you need to import to um, uh, have access to these skies. So you can click um, from sky presets and there it is, night skies. I can load it and it appears here on the dropdown. And now I have access to all these beautiful night skies. So I would recommend everyone wow. right now to go in there and download these free uh, sky packs. And we have this super cool um, fireworks one. So maybe maybe that's what I'll use. So that's <laughs> that's super cool. So I yeah, love that. make sure that you um, get access to that. And before I forget, because we mentioned it earlier, we talked about the banana. So since I just uploaded my Photoshop, it took away my banana tool. So if you want to add the banana tool into Photoshop, click on the three dot icon, go into edit toolbar, 
hold the shift key and click on done and you'll see a banana in the toolbar. So that's how you will add the banana in the toolbar in Photoshop. And um, yeah, so we had the uh, actual person who wrote the banana tool in Photoshop, Foster, he's in the chat. I don't know if he's still here watching, but thank you so much for writing that into Photoshop, Foster. I appreciate that. I love it. And I, I show everyone and how to put it on there because it just makes me happy to see that banana on there. It makes me so happy too. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, someone asked if they are all royalty free. That's a good question. I assume so, right? I believe that they are. I don't think um, Adobe would po put stuff in there that it isn't. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I would I think because it's going through stock, right? I I'm not sure if it's going through stock, but I'm but if they're gonna put something, is I would assume that there's the same um, legality as the ones that are already inside the application. Okay. that you can use them with whatever you want. But I'm looking, I'm actually scrolling through, see if I see any any legal copy, but no, there's no no copy. Um, you can look through that page. Um, if you go into the sky replacement tool and go into uh, get more skies, you might wanna just look through the page and see if there's something there about that. But I believe that you can use them on any project that you like. Yeah, that is great. Cool. I was just looking and now, of course, I'm seeing my Photoshop update is available. It was not available before we hopped on this. Maybe I needed <laughs> to like reopen it or something. <laughs> yeah, that looks so good. I really love the fireworks. Yeah, yeah, they look great. Um, Foster Sane, who wrote the banana tool, um, says updating Photoshop makes the banana go away to file a bug. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to file a bug so it doesn't go away if you update Photoshop. Oh, no. Okay, maybe <laughs> I won't update. I don't want to lose my banana. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Awesome. Um, but yeah, um, uh, are, is it, do you want me to continue, Anna, or do you have more to show? Um, I just was doing, I was just going to do more of the same kind of sky replacements on some different images, but I don't know if we want to do that first or do the video. Um, sure, sure. And we can just come back and end with you if you like. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Sounds good. So we'll continue. So we'll use this same photo um, here that you and your husband shot. And also you guys shot something super cool, which was this clouds sky sunset time lapse so in case you don't know photoshop can actually open up video files so this is an mp4 and as you can see it's a beautiful time lapse that you can you know play in photoshop and you can export a video you can export an animated gif and you can actually use a video on the sky replacement so there's there's really two ways to go about it right so in this case we want to use this video footage as the sky and if you wanted to do that, what I recommend that you do is one of two things. You either take a, like a, you copy, merge, or let me, let me be super clear about this. Um, the sky replacement tool allows you to replace skies, obviously, but there's a couple options in there that allows you to match the sky's color to the foreground so that it matches. So in some cases, you may need to save an actual image of the sky, import it, and then work with it. So I'll, I guess I'll do that workflow. So in this case, I'm just going to save this. Um, I'm so old school that I have <laughs> the save for the web keyboard shortcut memorized. So that's what I always do. Another way of like quickly saving a layer, if you want, as a JPEG, is um, you can just, in this case, I would have to rasterize it and then right click and quick export as a PNG. That would work as well. Export as, which is, you know, the new way. Um, and I'm just so, like I said, so old school that I just have the other one memorized and I press it without thinking. But um, in this case, I'm going to go with the new way for export as a JPEG. Um, I'll leave the size. It's fine. And I'll export it and I'll just drop it into the folder here that I had for this, this stream, which I think I was already on. Um, yeah, there, there I am. So I'm just going to put that JPEG in there. And what I'm going to do now is go into the sky replacement. So file, I'm sorry, edit sky replacement. And I'm going to bring that image in. So earlier I imported these packs. I can also import just the image. 
So I can go into import skies from images. So earlier I did sky presets, which is the dot sky file. And from images, I can just import a JPEG. And where is that JPEG? Is it the same folder? I should have noticed what I called it, right? Um, <laughs> oh my God. What did I call that JPEG? Oh my God, I don't see it. <laughs> Let me just give it a name that I recognize so that I I know what I'm doing. Sorry about that, guys. But story of my life. Yeah, I'm just going to call it. Um, Anna Sky, because <laughs> there we go. Oh my God, really? What's what's going on? See, this is what happens when I use the uh, the old school thing. I'm just yeah, the it. safer web. Yeah. And like I said, I wasn't even thinking of, oh my God, see? Um, oh, it's because I have a video. I, I'm think, I think that safe for the web might not like the video layer that I'm on. So I'm just gonna export as, and once again, export. And there it is. I called it layer one and I put it on a different, on a different folder. So that was, a, that was a problem. So now I know where it is. <laughs> um, so sorry about that guys. Edit sky replacement. It helps if you're in the right folder when looking for images pro tip. Yeah. Pro tip. Yeah. Make sure that you're looking in the right folder. So I was not looking in the right folder. Oh, here it is. See, there it is. It's a screenshot of, of what I had earlier. And the reason that I that I made a screenshot and brought that in is that Photoshop will not be will not bring in the video file as a sky. So I want to have a reference of what that sky is going to look like. And then I'm going to swap out the image for the video file. So I can adjust all these sliders just like Anna did earlier. I'm not going to spend too much time doing that because you guys already saw that. So let's just call this good. And I can just output to new layers. Oh, one thing I should mention is I like increasing the color adjustment. It just um, creates a curves adjustment layer that attempts to um, color harmonize the entire image. So I like bumping that up a little bit. So now that it's bumped up to like 93, I can output to new layers, press okay, and there it is. Notice that this is just a regular layer. And what I can do now is bring in that video file in there and drop it in. And I can just drag, the, drag this above everything else, unclip it, and just make sure that it fits my scene like so. Mm. Match it as best as I can. And, you know, again, take your time when you're actually working on, on a project. But what I can do now is just copy this layer mask or, or replace it, it doesn't matter, and just drag it over, put that one here. Uh, sh shut this one down and let me just make sure I get the, the same the same order. So I have this brightness and contrast adjustment layer clip to the video now. So if I go into window and timeline, I can create a video timeline and this will play that sky. So here we go. Did I not do? Oh, did I? You know what happened? See, like today is just not my day. I remember I rasterized this earlier. So if I undo that, now it's a video file. So now when I drag uh, okay. it over, I can place it. It's just not my day today, Anna. I know. I feel you. I feel like it's not my day either. It's not my week, to be honest. So <laughs> we're in it together. <laughs> yeah, here we are. So, I mean, same process, you know, but in this case, I'm just going to use the uh, video layer as opposed to the um, the... image. So I had to convert it to a smart object to increase the, the scale. Oops. See, the thing is, is make sure that when you do this, you convert it as a smart object without the layer mask. And then you apply the layer mask and then you transform it. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. And I know that it might have been a little confusing, but I'll, I'll go through it again. So now when I hit play, we have the animated sky so we took the video that your husband shot. We made a screenshot of that video, imported it into Replace Sky so that we could have an image to work with to match the colors, tones, and all that good stuff. Once we exported those files as layers, all we did is replace the still image with the video 
and now the video plays and like i said before you can export this as a video or a jpeg or anything else that you want actually those are basically your two options you can go into the three dot icon here click on render video or the hamburger icon rather click on render video you can ex export as a dot two six four or you can uh do the um gif animation as well so you can do either or but wow. that's how you do it with video now there's another thing that you can do with video where i need to actually use a different file let me bring it up first so that we have access to it and, and sorry about that i should have had this file up and ready to roll but no worries i know exactly where it is and we're going to um, now do the opposite what if the foreground is video and you want just to replace it with an image so to do that, we actually have to trick Photoshop. And I'm going to show you how to trick Photoshop into doing a sky replacement on a video layer. So give me one second here while I find this image. This is so cool. I've never I didn't even know you could do this. I'm going to have to watch the replay just to to learn it all. Yeah, that's the thing about Photoshop. Sometimes you you can you have to trick it into doing what you want it to do. Yeah. So um, I have this image here and I'm going to um, open it up in Photoshop. File open and I have it right here. I have this video of London. There it is. And let me close these other images because, you know, I don't want my computer to slow down. So we have <laughs> this video of London. You can see there it is, London, right? But, you know, it's really gloomy and gray. And what if I wanted to do a sky replacement on this video? Well, if you go into the edit feature, notice that sky replacement is disabled because Photoshop will, uh, the sky replacement will not work on video layers. So we have to trick Photoshop into thinking that this is a, an image. And the way that you do that is by converting the video group into a smart object. And now if you go into edit sky replacement, Photoshop thinks is an image and we can do the sky replacement. So there it is. See that? So we can use this is the image that you know you shot, Anna, the, the one that's on there now. Oh, yeah. So we can use that if we want to, or we can use one of the storm images just to make it even look more amazing. <laughs> so it really depends on what you want on, on what you want to do, right? So it doesn't matter which image you select, I'll select the one that you shot, Anna. And obviously you can spend a lot more time fine tuning the image so that it, it matches better. But in this case, I'm just going to increase the color adjustment a little bit. And I'm going to maybe brighten up the foreground. Notice that the lighting mode is set to multiply. Multiply makes things darker and screen makes things brighter. So you can adjust the um, lighting to better represent your background. In this case, I think that screen works better. Um, and then I can just press OK, and this will output regular layers. But again, notice that these these are video files, and make sure that the timeline is completely full by these layers. Uh, it's completely filled up by these layers. But anyway, when you hit play, you'll see that now you have a video with a replaced sky. Pretty pretty cool. Wow. The one thing you have to remember is that this will only work if you shot your video on a tripod, and it's not the you're not moving the video because this will not do motion tracking after effects and other tools like that will definitely motion track video for you photoshop will not so this will only work on a tripod so this is a great technique to again create animated gifs and things like that where you you can replace the sky some of you may be thinking well what about the water and the reflection remember this is just a regular photoshop layer stack so you can duplicate this layer Control j on windows command j on the mac Press Control T, Command T to transform, right click and flip it vertical and bring it down. And I can just delete this layer mask because we don't need it and place it right about here. And like Anna did earlier, we can make a black layer mask. If you wanna make a black layer mask from the beginning, you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to make it black. And then we can just selectively paint in the Oops, um, the sky on here. And I think I somehow um, got rid of my sky on top. How did that happen? <laughs> I didn't even see. <laughs> oh, I think I dragged it down. Is that what I did? Yeah, I dragged it down. And I think I also transformed it. Whoops. Um, let me just bring it back. Whoops, a daisy. Anyway, Whoops. there it is. <laughs> 
and then this is the oh i'm sorry so you know why this is happening this is happening because these are linked layers and the reason that i didn't notice is because my panel is not expanded all the way notice that when i expand it you have these little link icons that means that when you make an adjustment to one all the others will have that same adjustment so what i need to do is simply unlink them and now i can i can work on them without affecting the other so make sure that you unlink them and then i can bring this one down here and again i'll make it all black and i'll transform it vertically and paint with white on that layer like so and then you can use whatever blending mode works best for your image i can try screen and reducing the opacity may you know i don't want to spend the whole session doing this but i can then go in there and, and color correct the water a little bit so that it's a little more blue but i think that you get the idea um the the key thing that i wanted to show here was that you can take video that is still trick photoshop into thinking it's an image by converting it into a smart object and then do the sky replacement on that video and you can obviously go in there and fine tune it even more and if this happens that the sky goes away it just simply means that that image uh, that image layer is not stretched out all the way to fill the timeline. So make sure that you stretch them all the way out like so. And then you can hit play and there you go. So you can create some motion graph and uh, motion graphic effects using Photoshop. It's so cool. Cool. I Any questions in the chat? Love that. What? Let's see. I think everyone's loving the outsmarting Photoshop on there. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, one, I see one question. How do you explain everything moving yeah, but the sky? <laughs> well, I mean, if you have like a really short, I mean, this is, you know, if you, if you have like a five second clip, you know, it, the sky probably wouldn't move. And if you really, really wanted to, you can create like a position keyframe. I mean, this is already super advanced, but I guess <laughs> we, we have to answer the question. So there's keyframes in Photoshop, right? So what you would do is you would press like Control T, Command T, uh, T to transform. Actually, I'm going to do this guy on top and then make it a little bit larger and then do like a position keyframe in the beginning and then do one at the end and just slightly move it. Maybe not too much, maybe just a little tiny bit. Oh, I think I just did the, did the, um, the, what do you call it? The copy I wanted to, oh yeah, that's the right one. But um, when you do position keyframes, you can move the uh, the sky. So it's like an animation. So let me, I keep doing the wrong layer. I'm going to do this layer. So let me see if that works. Um, I got to do the keyframe on this one. Sorry about that. On this keyframe here. And then I, I'm going to do an extreme motion. You don't have to do this, but just so that it's noticeable. So like all the way over here. So now the sky moves. I wouldn't do that much. I would just do a little tiny bit to just so that it it moves a little bit. So maybe, wow. maybe just a tiny little bit like that. So then, you know, the clouds move just a tiny little bit, but I wouldn't make, obviously, you know, it, it's going to look fake the more you look at it. But the point is, is that you're going to make a short, you know, maybe 10 second clip, five second clip, and no, nobody should be able to notice it. So you can do a little bit of motion on that still, if you wanted to. Also, if you wanted to, you can bring in that video that um anna shot so i can go into file um place embedded and i have on my desktop that folder that i was working with with anna which is not that one it's this one <laughs> and anna there has this cloudy sky sunset time lapse i can place that in here and that's a video and all i need to do is use that same layer mask that the sky replacement made and now I have video on video. So it's going to be a little slow to render, but I think you get the idea. See that? So you can do that as well. You can use a still image or you can use another video file if you want. So that's how you would wow. um, work with that moving sky. Cool. That is so cool. Um, let's see. Foster said you can also take the sky movie and use it for the sky as a smart object. The sky replacement mask can be mm -hmm. used in that case. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep, which is basically what we just did. Yeah, That's right, yeah. Foster. Yep. Cool. Wow. Love that. You learn something new every day. 
Awesome. Yeah. Um, so back to you. And I think if, if you have more, we, we love to see it. All right. Um, let me just get my screen share here. All right, we are back on mine. Um, we, okay, so um, there's a bunch of different things we could do here. Uh, I guess what I wanna do first is show you all some of the photos that I put in the folder with Jesus that we can um, play around with and kind of what we're gonna continue to do for the rest of the stream is take a look at these and then start to put some different skies in and I'll show you a few different methods for doing that. And then maybe we could just edit it, edit it out and start to uh, create a final composition here and maybe do a little surrealism stuff because I can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, let me just show you all what we have here and then um, I'll start working on some stuff. And if anything stands out to you, please let me know in the chat and then we can work on that image too. So these are just like a bunch of different travel photos that um, my husband James and I put together in here for us to work on today. Um, but we can also take some different stock photos too. There's some cool silhouette things. And I'm open to trying some stuff, whatever you guys think. Ooh, yeah, let us know in the chat. We'll give you guys a few minutes or a few seconds to respond. I know the stream has a slight delay, so. Yeah. And I will scroll, and if you see something in there that you like, let us know. Yeah. I think I think Anna likes the challenge of being put on the spot, because I know that I do. <laughs> I know, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I always <laughs> set myself up for that, then I'm like, yeah. what am I doing? Um, so I guess one thing Robert I Robert said to, the bridge. Uh, the covered bridge, this this one. Let us know. I had that one queued up. Perfect. Reflection on water with sunset. Cool. Uh, there's a lot of reflection on water with sunset. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, we can we can try this one. Yeah, Robert said yes, that one. Okay, cool. Robert, let's uh, take a look at that because this is uh, an interesting one because we um, have a very blown out sky here and uh, it's going to be a little bit tough to get some of the branches back in, but this is a place where we could really start playing around with some brushes and, mm -hmm. and um, maybe add some new foliage in. Uh, and this is a beautiful covered bridge in Vermont. And we got there a little after peak color. You can see a lot of the leaves have left the trees. And so it wasn't not, it was just not the ideal photo and um, also obviously not the ideal sky. So let me um, duplicate this layer. Let's see. Okay, so everyone, people are liking the bridge. Um, Stacy said the two people in silhouette in a funny pose with reflection. Okay, cool. <laughs> we can play around with that next. <laughs> All right. So um, then let's go up to edit sky replacement. And we don't want this, but let's see what it's going to do with this Milky Way funky sky. Oh, yeah. Starting to create something dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> So let's just, um, this was kind of shot, you know, end of the day, but not quite sunset. Um, so let's just play around with kind of matching this realistically and see what we can get. You can, just by looking at these, you can start to tell that some will work better than others. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. Definitely starts to give it more. I like that one. Vibe. That was cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's a good option. Ooh, okay. I like that too. That definitely feels like very Vermont to me. Yeah. So what do you think? Should we do the moodier sky? So, oh. okay, so that's show us option number one and then option number two and we'll let people type in the chat. Okay, so here's so option number one. Option number one. A little moody sky here. We might be able to shift it up a little bit too. Okay. And then option number two, a brighter Ooh. sunset sky. All right. So let us know in, in the chat and we'll give you guys a couple seconds to respond. So make sure you start typing now one or two, one or two. 
I won't I won't tell you which one I like. I don't want to influence any, anyone, but I know. Somebody UFO. said we need UFO skies. Oh, so what yeah. actually what I did, um, I made uh oh my god, some from Star Wars. I know it's a lot of Star Wars fans in the chat, but I cannot remember the name of the planet where the desert planet with Tatooine, is that the name of the planet that has two suns? So I made a composite like that and added it into the sky replacement so I can have like this alien sky type of Ooh, thing. Ooh, should we do that tomorrow? Let's do that tomorrow. Yeah, I like that. Perfect. Okay. Oh, so I think number two is gonna win. Cody Bear okay. two, Carol two, two, two. One, one, two, 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 two. Yeah, two. Over, <laughs> yeah, two. Awesome. Okay, I like two as well. Me too. I like, I two, like two, two as well. Yeah, I like two too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just playing with the shift edge here to kind of try to see where we can start to get most of these leaves back in. Um, this is definitely going to be a challenge to get that to look good, but um, let's see. So then. Um, just kind of on the spot, playing around, seeing what works. I definitely mm -hmm. like this little darker. Um, and a lot of times what I'll do too is, and I'm sure many of you work this way too, is I'll take something to the full extreme on the slider scale to see what it looks like and, and then tone it back. And you end mm -hmm. up getting a lot of cool things happening with this. And this is how I, I tend to sometimes get like crazy colors in my work. And I, I learned this um, from my good friend, Magdiel Lopez, who you know mm. as well. Um, yeah. And yeah. he learned from um, Clarence, I forget his last name, but he has like crazy work. And so what they mm -hmm. do is they will take curves and temperature and they'll take it in this way that we would never normally work mm. in. They'll take it all the way up and all the way down and you end up getting really cool colors. So that's yeah. just a good way to kind of learn and to start to see like what works best for yeah. your taste. Yeah, shout out to Magdale. I think last time I saw you in person was with Magdale. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. such a fun night. So then we can scale this and start to get it kind of in place. I really liked where it was and I don't want to lose that. So that looks pretty good. And then um, let's, the foreground adjustments was new to me. That was something that you just did that I learned. So that was cool. Um, maybe we can see if this starts to adjust anything a bit more as well. Super cool. Okay, so someone said, I think we may need a flip. Sun is coming from the other side of the mm -hmm. original sky. Yes, very good point. Um, and is, do you know, is that something you can do in here? Und underneath the scale slider. Oh, flip. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of me. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That looks much more natural. Um, and mm -hmm. then we can slide this around a little bit and see. I'm going to start to get things looking nice. Um, and, and, and that's the thing. If you forget what, you know, that there's a flip button or whatever, it doesn't matter. Remember, these are going to be layers and you, you can always come back and adjust the layers any way that you want. So Again, so I, I cannot drive that point home that I love that you can just manipulate the output as layers rather than just being like a stamp, you know what I mean? Where everything's just flattened. Yeah. Yeah, it helps so much. And so, yeah, look at all the layers we got here. So every adjustment that we made went into its own layer. Mm -hmm. So we can come back and start to look at how these affected the overall look. And then we can even use this as its own layer mask to adjust it. So we could paint with, let's see if we have this. So it's darkening everything up, but maybe we want to just have the light kind of hitting these trees here, maybe up here. Um, and actually first I'm going to adjust the general layer mask. So I'm just going to click Alt Option again and come in and look at it. And it's looking pretty good, but the only thing I want to fix is this area here and the roof. So I'm just going to paint with a black brush and I'm going to bring my hardness up on this one and just kind of do this quickly down and dirty. <laughs> so just painting that in with my trackpad. <laughs> You're a Good professional times. with that thing. I know. We should get a trackpad company to sponsor you. Ooh, now we're talking. <laughs> like the number one track, uh, track uh, pad user in the world. 
Yes. <laughs> I'll take that. Okay, so as I disappear from the screen, I get like so close to my computer screen. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, that looks pretty good in terms of everything getting back in there. Um, so our foreground lighting is kind of interesting here. Maybe we'll actually get rid of that a little. Sure. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like it turned on so the trees are darker or do you like it turned off so things are lighter? Because what I was thinking about doing is coming into this foreground color. And what I was starting to say before is just with a nice soft, like low flow brush of kind of like painting some of this brightness back in. Mm -hmm. And so again, like I said, this one's tough with the trees, but this is a technique that I use in all of my images to start to paint glow in. Mm. Yeah, I remember for a while you were working a lot with glowing stuff. I, didn't yeah. you have a light also when I saw you? I yeah. You had like a brick light and you're taking pictures of it. Yes, I love that thing. What is that thing called? Um, It's, I'll have to get the link. It's like a pixel something. I'm like blanking on what it's called right now. And it's usually sitting around here somewhere. But it's super, super cool. Yeah, it's the um, the light that I used in my profile picture. And then Paul Tranny has the same one. Were you there mm. when we were taking those photos? Yes, yes. Yeah. It, was it in a pinball machine or something like that? Um, I no, forget. it's, it starts with a P. It's like, I don't know why I'm blanking on it right now. My brain is mushy <laughs> this week. No worries. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. People, we got some, a few people said off, a few people said on. Um, on because it helps with the hazy look the branches get. Okay, so maybe we'll leave it on and we'll just use this foreground color to kind of brighten things up a little mm -hmm. bit. It's funny because I had such high hopes for this location and mm -hmm. this image and everything I had seen it on Instagram and I hate this photo and I we never ended up using it for anything so it's fun here, to kind of play with it now here we are using it now yeah and then you can see me running through the bridge right there <laughs> <laughs> all right so um I didn't see. even see you there I know you can barely see it let's start to actually because we did say in um, we did say in the description that we were going to get rid of dis distracting objects. objects. Yeah. So let's do a little bit of that um, before we get back into um, uh, doing some of the color adjustment. Okay. So I'm just going to make a new layer here. Not in my sky replacement group. There we go. And um, I'm going to keep Woodstock Bridge because that's telling us where it is. I think I'll get rid of the slippery when wet. You don't need that. <laughs> and I'm just going to use the clone stamp tool here. And I feel like there are so many new things that you can do. Like we could do the um, uh, content aware fill, but I feel like we do have a lot of details here that mm -hmm. will start to blur and Sometimes when you use the content aware fill, it's better for bigger areas. So I'm going to do that down below, but I am going to do this by hand right here. Sounds good. What's everyone think? You guys like this uh, bridge photo? Yeah, let us know. I love it. I think it's great. And I kind of like it that you're hidden in there because I didn't, I didn't notice it until you pointed it out. Yeah, it kind of gives a little mystery. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, um, when you use clone stamp tool, you, you know, you either, I feel like you either have one of two ways. You're either someone who comes in and is like really just in there to get rid of the object, or sometimes mm -hmm. you might like really take your time, like painting stuff back in. And so mm -hmm. I tend to sometimes like sit and use the colors and like, we'll paint it back in and right. it takes me longer, but then, you know, it's sometimes it can look really good. And that's something that I'll use to, um, like a lot of times people will be like, can you Photoshop this family person into the picture that they weren't <laughs> in or whatever? And I'll use the clone stamp that way to really like paint the realism right. back in. So 
So you got all these different like wood textures. So that never makes it easy, but. Right. Looking pretty good there. And kind of compare it to the other side. Maybe we'll just bring this down here. Yeah, good enough. Good enough. So that looks pretty good. Now um, let's come down and we're gonna try content aware fill on this little manhole here. So let's um, circle that. I'm worried it's gonna mess up the leaves, but. Now, um, now I don't wanna interrupt Anna, but do you know um, the keyboard shortcuts for rotating and scaling the clone stamp source? I always forget that. I <laughs> yeah. I haven't done that in so long. Yeah, it's uh you can hold Alt uh, or in the Mac you're on a Mac right option yeah. so Alt on Windows option on the Mac, the Shift key, in the left and right bracket uh, uh, greater than and less than symbol so like the uh, the question the uh, comma and period. So when you when you um select something if you hold Option and you you will and click you'll set the sample source. Okay, let's and see. and then if you hold option shift and the greater than or less than key, you'll notice that the preview starts rotating. Okay. Option shift greater than or less than. And then you should see a little preview and it, it should rotate the, uh, the, the brush. Whoops. You can also do it manually if you don't want to remember keyboard shortcuts. If you just want to do it manually, you can go into um, window and select clone source and you'll see the rotation uh, feature there in the middle, that little uh, underneath the W and H, you'll see the little uh, angle icon and you can rotate it oh, that yeah. way too. I don't know, why is the shortcut not working? So option, shift. And then the greater than or less than keys, yeah. And if it doesn't work, you can do it manually, so. Okay, no so worries. then window and what did you say? Clone source. Clone source. Yeah, and then here you'll see the angle icon right in the middle of the panel. Yeah, and you can rotate it manually. So sometimes when you're cloning something, you 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 want what you're cloning, but it might not be in the right angle, so you can rotate it so that it matches to so that. Makes ah, sense. okay. So let's see. I wish that shortcut was working because I've used that before, and then it's yeah. cool because you can see it actually rotate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But no biggie. That is so strange. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's... Option and option shift and then the um, greater than less than keys. And if you use option shift and the um, bracket keys, then you'll scale the clone source. Oh, yeah. OK. Wait, I'm wondering if it was because I had an area selected. Oh, I don't know. Let me see. OK, option shift. Yeah, there we go. Yay. Oh, wait, I'm using my. Wait, that's shifting it. Just kidding. It doesn't like me. <laughs> it was I was using my arrow keys. That's at least shifting it that way. Yeah, so. the arrow keys move it, move it left and right. That's, that's a good one. I didn't mention that mm -hmm. one. So if you hold Alt Shift in the arrow keys, you'll offset the clone source. The greater than and less, uh, greater than and less than keys will rotate the clone source, and the bracket keys will scale the clone source. Cool. Okay. So let's see if this content aware fill is going to work. I think it yeah. will. Colin said, makes me think of the bridge in Sleepy Hollow. Definitely. I've never seen that movie or I read the books or anything. Really? No. Oh, Are they... great. A great Halloween movie. And really? Yeah. Let us, let us know in the chat if you've seen it. Okay. So content aware fill. All right, doing something. Let's see, I'm gonna zoom out here. I'm gonna start to paint out some of this other stuff and see what we can get. So the only thing that's a little glitchy here are um, the leaves and we can kind of clean that up. Mm -hmm. So I'm just playing around with this. To be honest, like, once again, you know, I end up using some of the older school methods more mm -hmm. than some of the new Photoshop AI stuff. 
And even though it can slow down your workflow, I think it's all really personal preference and yep. what you're doing and why you're doing it. Like, of course, if you're working for a client, um, then you might want to just kind of like try to get stuff done as quickly as you can. Mm -hmm. um, time is money, of course, but if you're working for yourself and you're enjoying the process and this is your meditation and your therapy, like it is for me when I do Photoshop, then sometimes I just take my, my sweet old time. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. So um, I'm going to merge these two together because I think that looks pretty good, even though this yeah. is a destructive method, but we're still working on that layer one instead of the background mm -hmm. copy right there. Fantastic. And uh, let's just kind of clone stamp some of these leaves and see how that starts to look. I'm going to clean up this pavement here. Maybe we'll try the healing brush, see what we can get. And um, as I said in the beginning, like we're doing this semi quickly to, um, you know, not waste your time. But I think mm -hmm. if, if you guys are doing this at home, like definitely take your time to make sure that this looks like really nice and smooth and finished. And sometimes I'll spend like a long time, 30 minutes, mm -hmm. an hour clone stop, clone stamping and healing one area until it looks perfect. Definitely. And we can give this all a little blur too, to kind of smooth it all out. And tomorrow we'll show you all how to um, remove distracting objects on the iPad. Yes, we will. Fun. Let us know in the chat, how many of you have Photoshop on the iPad? Curious to see. So this is looking a little crazy, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Just going along. <clears throat> at least much less distracting and you know what we can do too you can always crop this bad boy down when you start to get mm -hmm. these areas that are like oh my god this is looking really bad really distracting what if we just cropped up to there after all that hard work we just did you know <laughs> let's just bring the focus of this image in and we can start to play with the rule of thirds here and kind mm -hmm. of get like a composition that looks really nice and get rid of any of that distracting material down there so that's already looking a lot better. Now let's start to play with some of the trees. Okay, so I'm gonna make a new layer and I want it to be up here. And so what I would do is I might go um, start to kind of look for some foliage, look on some like sites that have the free PNG downloads that we could put on there. Um, and then, or sometimes I might start to use a brush and I have a bunch of different brushes in here. Um, let's see what we got. Let's see if we have any plants. Yeah. And also just to remind everybody, you can also, there's that get more skies feature. You also have that with brushes. You can get more brushes too. I don't know if you want to show that Anna. Oh yeah. I always forget about that. Let's see. Do I have that? Yeah. Get more brushes. Yeah. Get more brushes and you should go up to a page on Adobe. Same thing. You need to um, have your Adobe ID and you can download those brush packs. You don't need to download any, but you know, just so that people are aware that that's there. Yeah, this is a really, really great feature. And I always forget about this. You have watercolor. Um, let's see. Oh, I know a lot of people have talked about using like the um, splatter brushes for mm -hmm. Um, Farrah Manley, she uses it to create snow, which I think is really cool. Um, and some of the dry media brushes. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I haven't actually taken a look at this in a while. So this is great. Really good for painting. Is there anything that we could use for trees? Huh. I don't really see don't, anything. Yeah. I don't, Maybe. don't, I don't recall anything off the top of my head. There'll be tree related <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, so just know that that's available to you all. Um, very nice feature there. But sometimes too, oh, wait, wait. Can... If you go into oh. the, I'm sorry for interrupting you, Anna. I that's think okay. That in the concept brushes, if you read the description, I think there might be something there. I know they have like rocks and stuff. Uh, you see the concept one is on the right hand side. Maybe that one, but again, we don't want to spend too much time searching, but I would recommend okay. that one for, for compositing. Let's see. Concept. Fast renderings. Oh, let's try that. Let's see how fast it downloads. <clears throat> yeah, it shouldn't take it shouldn't take too long. But that's a that's a good one that I often like using for all kinds of things. Yeah, let's give that a go. Okay, and Steve said there are trees in shape, so we could try that too. Oh, cool. Um, all right, so I'm going to import brushes. And I think it saved my downloads. There it is. Let's see what we got. Yeah. Okay, Kyle has so many cool brushes. I feel mm -hmm. like I could get lost in all of them and just like spend hours. Oh yeah. Let's see. Yeah, Stacy's also saying there are leaves there. Yeah, I haven't downloaded that back yet. Maybe I should. Many leaves in there. Okay. Cool. Um, so let's just test some stuff. We uh, this kind of looks like yeah, there are some leaves, there are some like squigglies. I'm kind of looking for something that's not quite like a leaf, but maybe has some texture to it and some movement. Um, looks like we got a lot of that kind of thing. That that actually looks pretty good because it's still leafy. Um, it is very like draw drawing illustration quality, which is cool. Um, but I don't know if it's quite what I want. But let's test it out. Sounds good. Like it definitely has this. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to not do that one. Let me try some others. Working on the spot. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is the reality of the work. A lot of people may see, like, like me, polished YouTube tutorials where everything works beautifully on the first go. Um, but that's because I've already practiced it, practiced it and had the assets ready. But in real life, you're playing around for hours sometimes, it seems, to yeah. get the right you know, brush, the right image, the right, you know, color, whatever it is. So, so this exactly. is reality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And you end up spending most of your time. Like people always ask me how long it takes me to make something. And 90% of my time is spent like thinking and planning and kind of like playing around <laughs> mm -hmm. until I actually figure out what it is that I want to do. Um, and then, you know, then it's like, a couple hours of the actual execution because i'll be like mm -hmm. that's not right that's not right mm -hmm. oh i need this stock photo i need this stock photo and yeah so that looks pretty cool especially like when you zoom out you start to at least get rid of that little like weird um i forget what you call it but where it's starting to disappear um so it starts to blend together a bit more let's try a few different brushes and a few different techniques to see um, what we can get and possibly just trying some like big trees. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, you know what? Susan had a great idea um, in the chat, which is um, you can use the the uh, trees under filter and render. That's a very good idea. Oh, yeah. And to make a whole new tree. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. All right. I'm going to try that in a couple minutes here. I'm just I want to try one thing. So see i don't think that this is really what i want either but i was just thinking if we had like a full tree mm -hmm. i don't know um and then so um my friend julius visuals of julius he made a bunch of really cool brushes too and Ooh. um i know he has grass which works very well um i don't think he has any trees but i was thinking we could play around with that too mm -hmm. So he actually set them so that they have like a changing color in them. Ooh. And he, so he set the foreground and the background so that they automatically come up with grass colors, which is pretty cool. 
But um, okay, let's try the render tree. So I um, do we need a new? I have a, a new, new layer. layer. Yeah. Okay. And we'll come up to render. Oh, it's not gonna. It needs to have something on it, right? No, it should come out with a blank layer. Really? Yeah, it should work. Uh, it, uh, you sh let me try it. Um, filter, render, trees. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's working for me on a on a blank layer. Let me see. Filter render tree. Why is it grayed out for me? Huh. I don't. It might be something with your system settings. Let me filter. Hmm. You are on an RGB layer. Yep. Um, eight bit. Yep. That should work. Um. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, it looks so. It might be. Um, it just might be your system settings. I noticed those three different options um, are disabled, so that might be a system. Just it just might not work on your system. Yeah, it's weird. I've been having that issue lately with a couple different things, like mm -hmm. um, also using uh, yeah. oil paint. It always is great yeah. out for me. All right. Well, um, if you want to, we can switch over to mine, and we can try it there if you want. Okay. I wonder if I could invite you to edit this without it glitching out. I, I've been following along, so I actually kind of have what you have. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, let's so, do yeah, it. Just, just switch over to mine. It's gonna be a little different, obviously, but um, let me know when my screen is, you guys can see my screen. For some reason, I lost the the screen where I can see your, your live screen, Anna. So I'm looking at the, at the one that's a little delayed for, I'm good, okay. Okay, cool. Yep. So um, as you can see, it's fairly similar to what Anna had. And what Anna was trying to do um, is on the blank layer here that I created, you can go into filter, render, tree. And from here, you have a ton of trees that you can select. As you can see, there's 34, 34 different kinds of trees. And you can select the light direction, left, right, the amount of leaves, you know, anything that you want. Um, leaf size, branch height, all this sort of stuff. And, and you know, just you can just play around with it. What I'm gonna do now is simply press okay. And now I can use this tree to maybe make it into like some sort of like foreground element here. Yeah. And then I could color match it to the background, you know, using, you know, curves might work. So make sure that you clip it to the layer below and maybe use hue and saturation, clip it to the layer below desaturated and you know maybe adjust it so that it matches the uh, current image that you're working with so something like that maybe might be a little too dark so you know you, you can play around with it until you find something that works for your uh, design and also in this case this might be a little too sharp for what we're for, for the scene so maybe I can blur it just a little bit with Gaussian blur you know just a tiny little bit you know and, and now you have an element in here that, you know, you can add to your to your image to sort of frame the, the image better. You know, you have like a, a foreground element. And obviously you can spend more time selecting the right type of tree so that it matches the trees that are there, a completely different one. It's totally, totally up to you. Also, the cool thing that you can do with one of these trees is you can go into right click on it, select duplicate layer, go into new, and there's my tree and I can just go into edit and define brush preset and I can have a, a brush that is oh, a yeah. tree now. So now I can go into a new document just so that, you know, I have more room to work with. And I'm just gonna bring this down using the left uh, arrow bracket key on the keyboard. That doesn't work obviously, but if you click on this icon here, you'll get the tree properties, the brush settings rather, tree properties, brush settings. <laughs> and, and, you can, and you can increase the spacing and now you have, you know, different uh, trees. You can even do more stuff like going into uh, shape dynamics and you can do a flip X jitter, which means that now the trees will flip horizontally so they won't be facing the same way. Um, if you do the flip Y jitter, then some trees will uh, face one way and other trees will face, uh, face the other. One will be upside down and not the others. We don't want that, obviously. Um, so just adjust the flip X and then under shape dynamics, also adjust the size jitter so that some are smaller, some are bigger. And you get the idea. You can just start creating like a forest or something like that just by 
using um, the brush feature. So something cool you can do with, with uh, trees. Uh, something that we promised earlier, Anna, that we haven't shown, and if you don't mind, let me just show how to download free resources from Adobe Stock. Is that cool? Yes. So if you go into, thank you, by the way, if you go into uh, stock.adobe.com, you can click on this drop down and select free. And these are free resources that you can use. For example, I can select a flare, type in the word flare. I, I had already typed it before. I just wanted to make sure that there were some available for the stream. <laughs> But the point is, is that all these images are free. See that free, free. When you hover over them, you can see they're free. So you can download them for free. And free what you for can do, free, 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 free. Yeah, free, 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 free. <laughs> and what you can do is download something like this. I can click on license. It'll um, save it to my Creative Cloud account into this library. And it's going to tell me to download it. I'm not going to download it. It's already saved to my default library called 1324. And I can now use that on this image. Um, if I go into that library, here it is, 1324. Where are my images? Um, graphics, here they are. There it is, see that? So I can now drag it into my, my scene and I can just make this a little bit bigger here. So basically we have like the sun here, you know, make it more dramatic. In yeah. Photoshop, if you want to get rid of dark pixels and only keep the bright ones, you can use the blending mode and I can use the screen blending mode and I can just adjust this accordingly. Maybe place that there, add a layer mask, paint with black, not using that tree brush that I created. <laughs> and I can just hide any seams, right? I can also create a levels adjustment layer, clip it to the layer below, and then just adjust that flare any way that I want, just so that it looks brighter or not as bright, totally up to you. If you want to uh, colorize that flare, you can create a hue and saturation adjustment layer, click it to the layer below, click on colorize, and then adjust the saturation in the color. So maybe we can make it yellow. And um, here's something um, that I, I, I wanna do. So I don't like the angle of, of the uh, flare. So maybe I can press Control T, Command T to transform. If you click on this checkbox, you'll enable the reference point. I call it the pivot point because it helps you uh, pivot the image from wherever you drag this point to. So I'm gonna drag it here to the center of the sun, click and rotate so that just kind of, the flare kind of comes down like that. And maybe I can position it somewhere like so maybe you have more control over it right and i move the position so i gotta move the pivot point too so that it rotates from that center point anyway something like this and i think it's a little too bright now so maybe i could just reduce that intensity you know you, you can adjust it any way that you want and anna was talking about something earlier that i i completely agree with which is that she uses the camera raw filter in the beginning and the end of a compositing process or, or, or any job. So that's what I like to do. I'm gonna select the layer at the bottom, hold shift, click on the layer on top, right click and convert to smart object. A smart object is a container that holds one or more layers and it allows you to apply non-destructive adjustments, distortions, filters and transformations. In other words, you can just adjust anything that you want at any time or completely delete that adjustment. But the point is that now I can go into filter camera raw filter and control this composite as a single image. Remember, we replaced the sky when we replace and we added that flare. Um, in Anna's composite, she also removed the sign and uh, the dra uh, drainage here, which I didn't do, but in her case, she would have all those layers in that smart object and we can control it as one layer. But notice that now we have all these layers stacked on top of one another and that necessarily wouldn't look right uh, if we start making these adjustments, especially if we add vignettes and things like that. So what you need to do is double click on this smart object and then just crop it using the crop tool. Make sure that you disable delete crop pixels so that you don't delete anything. You just hide those things. So I'm just gonna hide these here like so, and then drag this one up, click on the check mark to commit the changes. And looks like I didn't do that good of a job there. There we go. I can save this, it's just a smart object. And now uh, I don't need to crop this, I need to move it because uh, the crop made the, the crop that I did in this um, smart object made the smart object here move. So all I need to do is with the move tool, just move it back into place like so. And now 
when I go into the camera raw filter, you won't see all that extra stuff if it ever wants to come up. Um, it looks like I didn't do a good job in the cropping, but that's fine. You can um, crop it better on the other on the other image on the smart object. But anyway, the point is that once you have it cropped, you can come in here and start making all your adjustments. Treat this like a regular photo, even though it's a composite. Um, it might not be so surreal at this point, but tomorrow when we start creating more surreal images, you'll be able to treat that surreal photo as a real photo using Camera Raw, and you can adjust it any way that you want. One of the cool things that I like to do is use the color grading feature and then add maybe a color to the shadows. In this case, maybe I'll add like an orange color and, you know, just apply it to the shadows like that. Might be too strong, so I'll bring it down a little bit. Sometimes I like to work better just with the single um, circle rather than all three. That way I can control saturation. That's the intensity of the color that I add. And then the hue on this lighter and then luminance, how dry, uh, dark or bright it is. But anyway, you can spend all the time in the world fine tuning all these effects. I'm just going to add a vignette. Um, and something, something cool about the vignette, um, there's this option here called highlights. If you click and drag this to the right, the vignette will not affect the highlights. And that's what I want in this case because the sun is very bright and I don't want it obstructed by the vignette. So I can adjust the vignette accordingly, press OK. And there it is, you know, just doing all that just with those free assets from Adobe Stock. So again, in case you missed it, you can go into stock.adobe.com, make sure that the dropdown has free selected and you can put whatever you want. I can put in horse, for example, and I'll get pictures of horses. <laughs> and also <laughs> you have videos, templates and 3D objects. So I can go into videos and now I have a free video of a horse we were talking about skies earlier so you can type in sky and get a bunch of free skies that you can use on your composites and work and if i go into images you have all of these free skies that you can download so not only do you have the free pack from the get more skies feature you can come into adobe stock and download all these free skies as well so a ton of resources for you oh that is so great I feel like that's such a game changer. Cool. Yeah. Um, so back to you, Anna. Thank you for right. allowing me to show these these features. Yeah, that was really good. Um, I I to be honest, I have never used uh, camera roll by making like a smart object like that, and then mm -hmm. kind of doing it mm -hmm. all. Um, I'm like not be able to use my words right now, but to have yeah. it open in a separate canvas, so you have all of your layers, and then. Mm -hmm. Um, so I end up usually like duplicating all my layers mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. merging them together, mm -hmm. which is obviously destructive, yeah. but that's great to know. I didn't, I mean, I knew you could do that, but I didn't even think to use it in that well, way. Actually, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up, Anna, because that is um, very important because, um, are we still on my screen? I'm sorry. I can't yeah. see what's on the live feed. feed. Cool. So Thank you so much for saying that. Um, so the reason I converted everything to a smart object now and, and um, didn't do what you do is because I know that my computer can handle these amount of layers and I knew that mm. it was not going to be an issue. But if I were working on a much larger composite, I would have not done that because my computer would have been super slow and okay. rendering everything. So I would have done what you did. The, the one thing that I do, um, Anna, just to show you what I do is uh, I press Control Alt Shift E, yep. which takes all the layers and then creates a new one. What I do at this point, though, is I call this layer final and then make that a smart object. And then I made that as smart, and I'll show you why. Okay. I'll make this into a smart object and I'm just going to apply it some, you know, random camera raw adjustment, something that's noticeable. It's not going to look pretty. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, you know, we'll just, you know, make it blue, you know, there you go. It looks fantastic. Right. Yeah. So, so there it is. And, you know, somebody tells me, you know what, I don't like that, that lens flare. Can you get rid of that lens flare? Well, I wouldn't be able to, I don't want to recreate all those settings that I applied on my smart object. So what I would do is, yeah, sure. I can get rid of the flare. Flare is gone and I'll do the same thing. I'll press, um, you know, let me get rid of that. Flare. There it is. I will do the same thing. Control, Alt, Shift, E, Command, Option, Shift, E on the Mac. Actually, I'm lying. That's not what I would do. I would press Control, <laughs> A, Control, A on Windows, Command, and the Mac, and then do like a copy merge. 
you know, shift control C, shift command C, copy merge. So I'm copying all the layers and then I will open up the smart object and paste that in there. So see, now I have both ver uh, versions in here. And when I close this smart object, the um, updated version shows up. Let me enable it so oh. you can see it. So I'm then gonna have to, I'm gonna have to watch that again. That was. Yeah, so, so, you know, my computer's not slowing down. I'm just making the changes to one layer, but I can still make the changes to the composite if I decide to make the change, my client, art director, whatever it is. Um, and then once I make those changes, I just take a copied merge version of that and paste it inside of the smart object. And I can still have, you know, this could be like, you know, version one, version two, and, and then you have like all your different versions in here. If you need to go back, you can just disable this. Oh, I see. That okay. So you're, so you're actually taking those new merged layers and putting them <laughs> into the smart object yes. canvas. Yes. And okay. that, and that way I don't have to redo any camera settings. It, you know, I, I would, right. maybe I did something so awesome that I don't, that's happened to me so many times. Same. And I'm like, oh my God, this is great. And it's, everything's flattened. I have no idea how I did it. You know? Yep. Yep. Okay. That's really great to know because I um, have definitely dealt with that where I'll make it a smart object and then I'll be like, oh, I don't actually want this one thing like with the flare. Mm -hmm. And then I, I'm like, okay, remove camera raw, redo it mm -hmm. later on again. Mm -hmm. And so that's great. That's cool. very helpful. Yeah. All right. Well, um, back to you. All righty. So the, I think the question in the chat, is it free for CC subscribers or all people? I'm assuming to not that you're talking about Adobe stock. It, it's available to everyone. If I'm not mistaken, I don't, I don't think that you do need to have an Adobe ID. And I believe that you can just download the file, but I'm not hundred percent sure on that. I don't know if you know the answer to that question, Anna. Yeah, I am not sure. I think you definitely have to have a login, but mm -hmm. I don't know if you need to have like the actual subscription. Right. But test it out. If you don't have the subscription, just make a login and see if you can download. Mm -hmm. I feel like it would make sense that you could still download the images. Yeah. But um, because so you I, don't have to download them to the creative cloud. You can download them to your computer. I'm sorry for interrupting Anna. Continue. No, that's, that's totally fine. It's always hard on these streams to yeah. <laughs> not cut each other off. Right. But right. yeah. Yeah. Good point on there. Um, so yeah, I was kind of following along a little bit too. Um, and just, I added like the, the flare in, which I think adds so much fun interest and makes it like really cool mm -hmm. looking. And then I was just playing around too. I went on, um, the free stock library and just got a tree, a couple of trees here. Cool. And, um, let's see, I have to keep moving zoom. Um, <laughs> uh, so I put this in multiply mode. So when I got it, it looked like that. And then I just put it in multiply, which gets rid of the white background. Um, and then I added like a little brightness and contrast mm -hmm. to it. Let's get it back over where it belongs. So I feel like if I were really working on this image to kind of give it a look, I don't think I'd actually even put a tree there. I think um, what I might do is, um, and I'm just gonna turn that off for now. There we go. Um, I think what I might do is actually start to get like some branches kind of coming over here to start to give like a really nice uh, like vignette look with the trees mm -hmm. the same way you were kind of starting to do. And then um, I think maybe even just going to kind of see here. Yeah, we have our leaves there. I think what I might start to do too is like play around with darkening all of this. And um, I, I feel like it came together really nicely too when you put it in camera raw. Once you kind of darken this up, you start mm -hmm. to lose that hazy effect around the tree. So um, this image is looking pretty good. I mean, I think it still needs a lot of work, but I think we can um, move on to a couple more images before we wrap up here. And I know a few of you had mentioned the beach um, with the reflection, so we could do that. And there is one more thing that I want to show you before um, we end. So let's do the beach with the reflection first. And then um, I want to show you a little trick to prep us for tomorrow. Sounds good. Now, before you start, I just want to mention really, really quick, I was doing some uh, 
quick research here. And it, 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 I know you're having this issue, Anna. And if somebody at home is having the same issue, one of the reasons the flame and tree generator on the render is grayed out could be that your GPU doesn't meet the minimum requirements. And the minimum requirement is two gigabytes of GPU memory. So if you don't have that, you might not be able to run those features. So if you're okay. on a laptop, that may be an issue. Um, some desktops don't meet that requirement. So I just wanted to bring that up. And if you're still having that issue, make sure if you're on Windows, make sure that your drivers are up to date. So I just wanted to throw that out there in case people were, were running into that issue. And so is that something that um, you can fix within the computer or is that like a computer issue that you would need to update your if, driver or whatever? If it's an, if it's an issue of, of uh, gigabytes in your uh, GPU, then you, if you're on a, on a Windows, you can, well, if you're on a desktop Windows, you can upgrade your, your video memory. I believe on a Mac, you can as well. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong. A laptop, that may be a little more difficult, but um, the issue is the the minimum requirement for the GPU. Um, or it could okay. be a uh, direct X driver and you can you should be able to update that um, on a Windows. I'm not sure, I'm not a Mac user. I'm, I'm not exactly sure if that's a Mac issue or not, but at least on the uh, Adobe website, um, this is what it says. And you can just simply type in on Google, Photoshop minimum requirements, and you can see all the requirements um, that you you're, you need to run Photoshop with all its features. And also under the requirements section, make sure that you click on the Photoshop graphics processor section so that you can see what features will not work if you don't meet the minimum graphic requirements. For example, uh, 3D perspective warp, uh, a couple other features won't work if you don't meet those requirements with your computer. So some okay. features will work if you don't have that much video memory, but not all of them. Okay, yeah, that's good to know because it's weird. I I used to be able to use uh, the render trees just mm -hmm. fine, and I mm -hmm. had oil paint working not that long ago too, mm -hmm. and then suddenly everything decided to stop working. On right, me. right, right. So it could it's be always, a different issue. Yeah. Yeah, always a mystery. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure if this was the other one that um people were talking about. So I said in the funny pose. So I assume that maybe this was the one. Um, and we can play around with this and uh, see um, what would happen if we do a sky replacement on it. And then we can try to do some cutting of people, cutting out of people and see where we get with it. So let's see, I'm curious to see what would happen with this. I feel like it might get confused. Let's, let's check it out. So it's a waiting game for it to load. Mm -hmm. Trying to see if there's any questions in the chat. Um, cool. Paul Tranny, what's up? Oh, is Paul in the chat? Yeah, he said, hey, gang. Oh, hey, Paul, how's it going? Good to see you in the chat. Or, or Ryan, how's it going, Ryan? Good to see you. What did Ryan say? I had that issue. I had to reinstall the earlier version of Photoshop. I just upgraded from or to buy a new iMac. Okay. Yeah, my computer is so old. I believe I got it in 2013. Okay. So it might that be time for me to get a new computer. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. Sunsets. Did that change? I mean, if it did, it like did it pretty flawlessly. I think. Oh yeah, it did. <laughs> you know, it did a good job when you don't know if it changed or not. You're like, wait I a know. minute, what happened? <laughs> this, wait, was that my real photo? I don't remember. <laughs> it's like I don't remember. Oh, this works awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that definitely could work well. And then, um, I really like the pink ones. Let's see. So we could also, you can see I've been adding a bunch of my own stuff in here. We can come in and add some other sunsets too. We can add some crazy galaxies and there's the fireworks. So let's just go um, import skies from images and then dig through the folder of stuff that we have and cool. see if there's anything that we could add of our own photos. So that's kind of fun too, if you took um, a photo maybe in the same spot like this, obviously the sunset picture doesn't really need that much of a fix on the background because it's beautiful as it is. But going back to what we talked about earlier, if you are doing um, 
a landscape shot with a person in the foreground and maybe you can't quite get the sky exposed properly or it's blown out or like the sun comes out later on and then you get these big beautiful clouds in your same situation then maybe you just take two photos and you use your one foreground and then you replace the sky with the mm -hmm. new photo that you've also taken so um, as we saw you never have to use uh, the the skies that you're given you can use whatever you want yeah. So let's try this one. We're just going to open it. And it's going to go, whoops, right into this folder here. And then this is kind of cool because there was a peer in this one. So we can actually kind of like line this up to start to play around with kind of a different look. So then we, so the original, this was, you can see it back there, um, had just like the basic sunset, but maybe we start to play with, um, try to get that place, start to play with adding some other foreground objects. So I'm just gonna see about shifting the edge here, exactly what I wanna do. Um, Scale it a little. You can start to get that sailboat in there. Cool. Kind of fun. All right. Um, color adjustment. Let me see. Let's make this a little bit pinkier and then we'll adjust the reflection. All right. So, so then, uh, oh, sorry uh, for interrupting, Anna. Let me just make one quick comment here. Uh, Foster is saying in the and sorry if I don't get your job title right, Foster, but I'm assuming you're an Adobe engineer since you're the person who put in the uh, um, banana into the toolbar. He's saying that um, he believes that if you update Photoshop, you will not lose existing capabilities, but new features that need a beefier GPU may not be enabled. In other words, the old stuff will stay. You may not have access to new stuff if your computer is older and you want to upgrade to the newer Photoshop. Oh, okay. So that's that's probably why then it's giving me issues, right? He mentioned earlier that that was probably your, your issue. She said, yeah, Anna, uh, it, the issue with the tree plugin is 100% because her machine is told. Oh, so sad. So it's time to upgrade. Um, it sounds like it. And, and Paul says, Paul Trani is saying that he missed the part. Um, he missed the earlier part of the screen, uh, the stream. But yes, Paul, we did talk about the more image, the more sky replacement feature in the sky replacement tool. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I just noticed that when you do the sky replacement, it actually crops that um, image right to where you create the sky, which is kind of mm -hmm. yeah, super cool, right? Yeah, definitely nice. But in this case, I wanted to be able to blend this down a bit more. So yeah. I'm like, oh, man. So let's actually take a look at something else. Let's um, get rid of the sky replacement. And let's go and do what I was talking about with the channels. And um, we'll see if we can kind of like cut this out the old school way and play around with a new sky. So I'm gonna come over to channels and then you may have seen me do this on other streams before and some other people do this. This is just like a really easy, fun way to cut things out when you have um, some silhouettes. So what you're gonna do is look for the channel that has the most contrast between the whites and the blacks. So I would say in this case, it's the red because um, we don't want any of those gray tones. So we're just gonna copy this channel, copy the red channel, and then we're gonna go command L for levels and we're going to try to get our um, we're going to try to get our blacks as black as we can anywhere that we want to keep the area so we're creating our own layer mask essentially and then the whites as white as we can so we're just going to do that a little bit before we start to lose some of those areas that we do want to keep and then we're going to come in with our burn tool and we're gonna make sure we're on shadows and exposure at 100%. And then just start to paint in these areas that you wanna keep. And you can, if you know you want this whole area down here, 
Um, you can even just go in with a brush and put it to black. Got to turn our flow back up. And paint all that in. And this is such a great way of masking. If you don't know this feature, please, please come back and check out Anna working on this again, because it, it works on a lot more than just guys, pretty much anything that has contrast. So yeah, I make... use it all the time. Yep. So then um, I switched to my dodge tool here and just making sure I'm on highlights with my exposure up and I'm getting rid of everywhere in the sky that's a little bit gray. Um, getting that all cleaned up. Okay, so then what you're gonna do is command click on that layer. You're gonna come back to your layer mask or to your layers here and then hold alt and click on your, um, click on add a layer mask. Like what words am I using? And so now we're not seeing it because we have that, but you can see if we turn the background off, now we have our layer mask created. So I'm just going to grab that image that we liked with the sailboat. Let's find that. <laughs> Old Chinese saying using a channel for masking is such a pro tip. I love it. Thanks, Paul. There's, they're calling the dot sky files Skynet files <laughs> from Terminator. So Adobe Sensei is probably Skynet and they're gonna take over the world pretty soon. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's just continue to kind of transform this. I'm gonna hold shift and then not hold shift and start to get this kind of position so that the sailboat's right in between. This is my brother and I, we were in Oregon and there was an mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful sunset and wow. we were just like having the time of our lives as you can see. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, General Kenobi said, uh, Paul, more pro using your fingers and a trackpad instead of your mouse or stylus. Yeah. <laughs> That's a real pro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, good times. Um, and you know, we might want to just add a little blur to this too, because we can see we're starting to get some blur in the ocean back here. Um, even though we are going to lose that sailboat a little, we can just kind of mm -hmm. play around and see if that starts to make it a little more realistic. Mm -hmm. Barry's saying that he uses channels for masking hair, trees, or items that have an isolated background or at least high contrast with the background. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so then we could come in and like just clean up the layer mask here, mm -hmm. start to kind of fix things and um, and decide how you want to kind of blend that. So I'll spend like hours blending stuff and and just like sit here and kind of go back and forth between having my flow really high and then like really low to kind of just sometimes I'll even go back over areas that I fully masked out um, with a super low flow and mm -hmm. um, and start to, no, I want white, start to paint it back in. So it almost like blends it and gives it like this misty look. Mm. And then you could kind of, so then you're getting that sunset back in there, but we could also kind of just like touch up that boat and, and like kind of doing almost like this double exposure look of blending the two together. And sometimes you can go too far where you start to see through things, but if you just do it just the right amount, then you get really, really nicely blended images. And uh, then you can- Oh, sorry, Anna. I was, just, I, I was just gonna say, I'm watching you work and like, oh my God, she's so good. And then I'm like, oh my God, she's doing it with her fingers in a trackpad. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> even, even more amazing. It's like running a five minute mile and you're like, oh yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, I did it happen on one foot. I was like, oh Christ. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Like my fingers definitely start to kind of like cramp up. I'm gonna end up getting arthritis so bad when <laughs> I'm older and everyone will be like, what's wrong with you? What's happening? You can't do anything. So like, I don't know if it's the best, but. Your precision is so good. It's, it's amazing. Paul <laughs> saying, uh, my guess is that Anna and Jesus are both uh, uh, pro track 
pro trackpad users, anyone who travels a lot becomes pro at using the trackpad. I, I travel with a, with a tiny little mouse, so I'm, I'm more proficient with the mouse and the trackpad. Yeah. But the, as we establish, it, oh, sorry, Anna. I was just going to say having a little travel mouse is definitely helpful too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we established earlier that you are the best trackpad user in the world. Yes. <laughs> oh, so funny. Okay. So um, I know you did this earlier with flipping the reflection in the video and mm -hmm. um, I'm going to just do it based on kind of what I would do. I don't know if it's the same as what you would do in a video, but whoops ryan wrote i tried using my trackpad while traveling for one for work once about 20 minutes in i called an uber and picked up a small tablet to save my fingertips <laughs> <laughs> i should probably just do that i don't know there's like something so weird about it to me like when i when i use mm -hmm. it um it's like it it's like when you pat your head and rub your tummy you know <laughs> oh god no i can't do that i can only <laughs> That's do one how at it a time feels. yeah well, maybe that's your superpower. You're just so good at it. Yeah. Okay. So um, reflections are tough. Like, what am I doing here? And I'm just going to play around with this until we start to get something that looks good. And uh, I really want to drive that point home, play around with, again, this is what it's all about. You know, again, if you see polish tutorials by me or anyone else on YouTube, you can be sure that we play it around a lot so that we can do it quickly and fast and efficient for the video. But you don't have to get discouraged if you don't get things right the first time, you're gonna make mistakes. And as you've seen in this stream, Anna and I have been playing around with different features until or uh, assets until we get it right. So this is what it's all about, just playing around and having fun. Yeah. And that's what always feels good too, because you learn so much from that um, and you discover new things. You discover maybe something that you never thought you would try mm -hmm. by accidentally clicking on something. Mm -hmm. um, and like right now, I don't have a plan or a rhyme or a reason for doing anything. I'm just kind of doing it because I know what these tools do well enough to mm -hmm. be able to just kind of open them up and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, <clears throat> wrapping it up already. Wrapping it went it by faster than I thought. Super, super quick. So let's see. Now you can see we're starting to get some of those reflections. Like the boat wouldn't necessarily be showing up. That's like too close, but we would get some of that pier. And then we could come in and uh, um, transform. Let's see if we do a little perspective on this. Pull that out a little bit, shift it over. It's all about just messing around. And then you could obviously clean things up. Mm -hmm. And then um, maybe we'll give it a little blur. Once it loads, I definitely need a new computer. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and we don't need to finish today, Anna. We can come back uh, tomorrow. We will be back tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. Um, 1230 Eastern, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, maybe you can let us know in the chat what time those are, what time that is where you live. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be back tomorrow. Um, I just wanted to take a few moments, Anna, to, um, first of all, thank you and your husband for allowing us to use your photos. And if you have like one quick second, maybe show your husband's Instagram or something like that. Oh, yeah. So we can, you know, promote his work since he does professional work as well. Uh, while you're finding that Instagram page, I was, I would like to remind everybody to check out the Photoshop daily creative challenge replays with Wudu Val every day at 9am Pacific. Right after us, I believe, we're going to have uh, Claudie from Print My Soul doing a replay for the Illustrator da Daily Creative Challenge. So make sure that you check those out. And tomorrow we will be doing an artist spotlight as well. So make sure that you come back and check us out tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Pacific here at Adobe Live. And Anna, I'll give you, I'll give the last a few moments uh, uh, to you so you can say goodbye and then showcase your husband's work. 
Yeah, so I just wanted to show this real quick. This is our travel page where we share kind of like our blogger-esque work and like our our live our our actual lives. And um, and so some of this is his work, some of it's my work. And then he is over here, James Bonanno. He has been on Adobe Live a number of times too with video. I know you all have watched him as well, and he's really really talented with um, with all things video. So this is some of his work in here um lots of like landscape photography and then he's my designated photographer wherever we go and so thank, oh, thank sorry. you so yeah i was just gonna say thank you so much yeah. for joining us everyone it was such a pleasure to talk to you all mm -hmm. through chat and to be here with you today thank you so much everybody we'll see you tomorrow see you tomorrow bye, bye. bye.